for all the honourable member uh, for Pearce. Mr Deputy Speaker, thank you. And of course, this motion, as was last week's motion, is all about and reference to the impending Senate election that West Australia will face alone. Poor old, poor old WA, I understand that when you win a lottery, not that I ever have had that pleasant experience, but when you do win a lottery, you find all of these estranged relatives coming out of the woodwork and being your best mate. And that's pretty much how West Australians feel at the moment, because every conceivable minor party is all of a sudden the best friend of the state, and Labor are having their crack as well. And I will say this for Labor. Yeah, yeah, I will say this for Labor. They are much improved from, from last week's effort to pretend to be the best friend of the state of Western Australia. Last week's motion on WA they couldn't manage to rustle up a single speaker uh, from Western Australia, and in fact, with all of the speakers they had and all of the time they had, they only managed to mention Western Australia twice. Now, maybe it's just me, but I'm thinking, well, if you are going to pass a, or try and move a motion that pretends you're the best friend of a state before an impending Senate election, you may, might want to at least find a West Australian or, or absent that, try and mention the state perhaps more than twice. Much improved, um, best, best improved performance on ground. We did actually find a West Australian this week. Unfortunately, she forgot about it and was late turning up for the motion. But nevertheless, a significantly improved effort from last week. And Mr Deputy Speaker, I wanted to sum up in, in my brief political experience what I think is emblematic of the attitude of Labor to Western Australia. And it goes back to a story in 2011 where I had the great privilege of delivering a budget as State Treasurer for Western Australia. And I increased a tax, or, or as I indicated at the time, I removed a concession that existed on a tax, uh, which is a much more pleasant way of putting it than increasing a tax. And Mr. Speaker, in fact, I will admit that when I was at university, I thought all tax was, tax was theft, but I took a slightly different view when I became the Treasurer of Western <laughs> Australia. And it's a necessary part of any economy. This was, a, this was a tax that applied to iron ore royalties, and there was a long-standing 40-year discount that had been offered to a type of iron ore called fines iron ore. Uh, the rate on fines iron ore was 5.625 per cent. The rate on lump iron ore was 7.5 per cent. And they are as they sound. Their ferrous content is essentially the same. Uh, lump iron ore is lumpy. Fines iron ore is more like a powdery substance. And traditionally, the reason why one was valued more highly than the other was that smelting mills in, in China and Asia and elsewhere were geared up for lump. That had changed over a 40-year period, and fines was just as valuable. But this discount remained. We removed the discount. We thought we gave. Uh, Labor proper notice of the fact that that was an impending move. It was a logical common sense move. And removing that discount brought in over the four out years of the budget $2 billion worth of much needed revenue to the state of Western Australia. And there's much complaint in WA, of course, and I've been a part of that complaint about the distributive system of GST. Uh, but as the Commonwealth Grants Commission operates, that removal on that mineral, finds iron ore, could have either been treated as, as a low royalty mineral or a high royalty mineral. And this is just one of those bizarre complexities of the Commonwealth Grants Commission. If the removal of the discount were treated on fines as a low royalty mineral, then over the longer sweep past the out years, we probably, that is WA, would have lost in the diminished GST receipts about 60 to 65 per cent of that $2 billion worth of revenue. And that would have been shared with our brethren from the other states and would have built um, hospitals in South Australia and other structures in Tasmania. Uh, if it were categorised in the high royalty mineral rate, WA would have lost in excess of the total amount raised. They would have lost more than the $2 billion that was raised from the revenue, which I think points out one of the difficulties with the Commonwealth Grants Commission is that if WA had thought that would happen, what incentive would there have been to remove the discount, raise $2 billion and share 65 per cent of it with the rest of Australia? I mean, what a bizarre system. But in any event, the then Treasurer, uh, the member for Lilly, made public statements that he would ensure that no direction were given to the Grants Commission, which would have the effect of ensuring that that change would be counted as a high-value royalty mineral and that WA would lose all $2 billion. In addition, both the then Prime Minister Julia Gillard and the then uh, Treasurer, the member for Lilly of Federal Labor, indicated that because of the move they would withhold or may withhold uh, hundreds of millions of dollars worth of infrastructure funding that had been earmarked for the state. So the new best friend of uh, the state today, not that long ago, when there was a legitimate increase in royalty rates to earn revenue for both the state and the rest of the nation, threatened to direct that all of those be taken back from the state and that previously earmarked funding to the tune of hundreds of millions of dollars be withheld from the state. So when we hear uh, the member for Perth and the member for Fremantle get up with, with what looks like a straight face and try and pretend that Labor is all of a sudden, on the eve of a Senate election, a great friend of the state that it imposed a mining tax on, that it imposed a carbon tax on, that it extraordinarily 
directly threaten to remove revenue from previously earmarked, I think that is unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. Yeah.